Hey everyone, this is Tony from Greasy Ranch Auto. Today we're working on a 2018 Ram 2500 with a 6.7 Cummins. This is a 4th gen, so it'll be the same from 2013 to 2018. Today we're replacing the coolant reservoir since the current reservoir is gunked up and keeps damaging the sensor, causing the low coolant light to stay on. I usually recommend to replace the coolant, but this customer will be coming back for another repair, which will need to, to have the coolant replaced. We'll be starting off by removing this top cover, as well as the front grill, since the coolant drain plug is on the driver's side of the radiator. Okay, so first thing was popping off these tabs. You got four of them on the top cover, one, two, three and four. And then once you pop them off, just pull this off. And then you're gonna have bolts in here as well. So you'll be taking this one down here and then these up here, two, three, four. And so you got that one down there as well. Okay, so we removed all the bolts. All the top ones are 10 millimeters. And just so you notice, the shorter ones are in the middle, and then the outer edge is the longer ones right here. And then the ones at the bottom are eight millimeters. And after that, you should just be able to pull it off. All right, so we got the front grill off. Next thing you wanna do is remove this cover on the right side. A few tabs holding it, you can pop it off with a screwdriver or by hand. And then if you get down here, that's where your drain plug is right here. What you want to do is get a piece of hose so you can redirect it and it doesn't fall all over your pipes. Okay, so we got that hose added to the radiator drain, routed it into a container. Your drain plug is an 18 millimeter. And you want to make sure you remove your cooling cap so it'll help it drain quicker. And if you're replacing the coolant, go ahead and drain it all. But since we're not replacing it here, we're only going to drain enough to clear the coolant reservoir. All right, so once you get enough of it drained out, be sure to close your plug back up. Make sure not to over tighten it since it is a plastic plug. And the next thing we'll be doing is removing the battery and the battery tray in order to clear out the reservoir. Okay, and so to remove your battery, it is being held down by a bracket down here, a 10 millimeter. Just remove that one. And then your battery posts, which are each eight millimeter, just to loosen them off and take out your battery. I will go ahead and recommend to disconnect your other battery just to be safe. You don't want your cable sparking or anything like that. Catch you off guard. All right, so we remove the battery. And like I said, be sure to go ahead and disconnect your other battery, you just want to be plain and safe. You ain't got to fully remove the battery, take it out. Next thing you want to do is remove the battery tray. Being held on by these bolts right here. That way you can clear out your reservoir. Also looks like there's a few tabs holding on the cable, so just pop those off. All right, so we ended up removing the bolts, which were 13 millimeters, and then pulling off the tabs. And then down here, you gotta make sure to remove these two nuts so you can remove the two wires and then the jumper wires as well. The shorter one will go to the one closest to the battery tray and then the longer one out here. And then another thing I found out is you gotta remove your fender liner since you will have two bolts down here, also 13 millimeter. And then after that, you should be able to remove it. All right, so we remove the battery tray. It's a little challenging, but just be careful not to break anything, or bend anything. The next thing you wanna do is come down here, come down to your coolant level sensor and disconnect it. Go ahead and disconnect your hose and remove its I believe it's held by three bolts, one here and then two up here. So go off, go ahead and start off with removing those. And then you'll have these two hoses as well. 
that'll be needing to remove. All right, so we've got the bolts off as well as the hose at the bottom. Make sure you put your container down there because there still was a bit in there just to catch it. And then I kept it upright so it doesn't keep leaking. Uh, one thing I did notice is it's probably easier to remove this side of the cable. That way you can clear out your reservoir easier instead of going around this cable. And then the clamps on top of the reservoir Look like you need a special tool, but we're gonna try to remove them. But if they do get damaged, just be sure to have extra clamps like these, and it'll it'll hold just fine. All right, so we got the tank removed. I did end up having to cut open the those clamps, but we'll be replacing them with those other style that I told you about, which are these kind. But as you can see in the reservoir, you see why it could cause it to damage that sensor. It's all clogged up in the bottom. All right, so we got the new one here. Just comparing it, make sure everything's exactly the same since this is a dormant one. And so we're gonna start off by bolting it up and then slowly put on the, the hoses back on. All right, so we have the reservoir reinstalled. Got the hoses back on, same with the clamps up here at the top. Went ahead and reconnected the sensor as well. Next thing we'll be adding is the battery tray back in. Okay, so we got the battery tray reinstalled. Tip I found out, it helps out with uh, making you a little bit more room is getting you a, get you a T20 bit and then remove the, these two bolts that are holding this. That way you, you're not fighting with it, trying to get it in there. And then on the fender liner, I'm not gonna add it up to the end because I wanna make sure there's no leaks or anything like that before we cover it back up. All right, so we got the battery reinstalled. Also got all our cables back on. I ended up having to add zip ties to all these cables because all those tabs ended up breaking. And then I went ahead and reconnected the battery as well. Next thing we'll be doing is reinstalling the front grill. And so we can start and fill up our coolant reservoir back up. All right, so we got the front grill reinstalled as well as the top cover. Went ahead and refilled our coolant all the way to the top before starting the truck as it will drop as soon as you start it. Once you get it started, you wanna get it up to operating temperature, check your coolant level. If it's still not at level, go ahead and repeat this process. You also wanna go ahead and check for leaks at this time. Once you get everything checked out, you can reinstall your fender liner and it'll be good to go. If you like this video, please like and subscribe as I'll be posting more repair videos as we go along. Thank you and have a great one.